All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video. My name is Eric Ita, and today we are training some dogs. I am in Atlanta right now. Uh, weather is nice. It's a bit hot, but um, we have a group class, and uh, in about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they're all going to be here. Under 10 dogs, because I don't like to yell. And also, it is small enough that every single person feels like they're getting some time. So, we're going to begin, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I begin, roll the clip. <laughs> See, the class starts in 10 minutes and this dog has been whining, just whining, whining, whining. I need to get some energy out so that she can actually stay through the class. People think Capri is well trained. Hey, up. All she does is whine, 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 whine. Yeah, yeah, put your back legs up there. Back up, back up, back up. Climb up, there you go. <laughs> Climb up, Climb. there you go. I'll just leave her there, get some energy out. Just wait, I'll be back. You know, when I was your age, a long time ago, we used to have to walk three, ki three kilometers in the pouring rain with pails on our heads just, just to get home, you know? And it really, it really was a tough time, but you know, you kids, you have it so easy nowadays. You know, you just press a button and it comes out. The tap, the tap is all, hey, 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 I'm still talking. See, that one wasn't enough for her, so we need more. Up. Up. Good. Off. Good. Up. Off. Where are you going? Off. Good. Up. Off. Off. Good. Up. Wait, hold on. Over there. Tunnel. No, 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 no. Come here. Tunnel. Good, come here. She ran up. <laughs> she tried to run. <laughs> up, up. Good, off. Off. Up, up. Good. Off. Maybe that's enough. <laughs> we need to put Billy to work, let's go. Billy sounds like Billy wants to do something. We gotta find a small thing to maybe just up and up and down this real quick. And <laughs> Billy said no, no thank you. Here, may I take that for a second? All right. Off. Good. Ah, ah. Up. Good. Off. Good. Up. Good. Off. Good. Up. Good, off. Good, up. Good, off. Good, up. Good, off. And not once has Billy acknowledged my existence, which is fine because he doesn't know me. Um, but you, the thing you don't want is a dog that's just kind of making impulsive decisions on their own without actually checking in with you. So it does help to get to the point where Billy's not like trying to make like go after dogs and do things like that. So that's some of what we're gonna work on in the class today. Good, up, good, off. Good, up, 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 good, off. Good, good, up. Up, up, good, off. Off, 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 good, up. Up. Good. Off. Sit. Good. Off. Good. Up. <laughs> Good. Sit. Good. Down. 
Good. Ah, ah, ah. Now we reinforce that down. Again, the pressure stays on until Billy will go into the down completely, and then pressure goes off. Off. Good. Up. Down. Good. Pressure again. Good. Good. Ah, ah, ah. Down means down, Billy. Good. Good. Okay. There we go. Billy up. Down. Good. Ha. Okay. There we go. Up. Sit. Good. Billy, down. Good. Good. Okay. Billy, up. Good, sit. Good, down. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I was in New York and there was a dog there that was afraid of buses. Like that, there you go. Okay. Yeah. I tried to make a little agility course and I went to where the buses, you know, were stopping and stuff. And I just had the dog hopping over and over and over again. So the dog is too focused on trying to hop over those cones that they're not as focused on the, the primary problem, which is, you know, the sound of the buses. So by the time we were done, the dog was able to walk up and down past the buses with no problem. And a lot of dog problems really just come from lack of exercise. Like we're living in a city where, I mean, you guys out here have a lot of nature and stuff. Like in Vegas, there isn't really any many places to go to. And people who have huskies, for, like a husky bit me two weeks ago. Oh, got me. Oh, you got me. They want to run. They want to like run from state to state. So imagine taking that kind of level of natural uh, inclination and just like keeping them in the house. You know what I mean? That's why Huskies have problems. All, all of the problems dogs have come from just not really having enough of what they need. You know, a dog like Capri that wants to bite stuff and chase stuff. If I don't give her toys to bite and take her out into the mountains to like run after stuff for a bit and then I call her back, she comes back, we go home, then she's happy because her natural instincts are being, you know, fulfilled. So that's another thing is you got to figure out what your, what your dog's breed's natural desire was to begin with. I don't, huh? What did she do when you got there? What did Capri do? Capri wasn't in the room at the time. I just went to an in-person session. Yeah, Capri won't, won't act outside of me giving her a command, but I've never put her in a situation, in a real life version of that situation. So I honestly don't know if she would or not. When Kurt came over to visit me, I put, it, I put a bite sleeve on him and she bit him. <laughs> yeah, but for her, it's, it's the same as biting a toy. So she doesn't, she's, she doesn't have a fear attached to it. That's what a lot of uh, people who do protection training, who don't do it well, Somebody say, oh, my dog, my dog bit, whatever, whatever, we should, you know, but the dog likes to bite, so maybe we should put them in protection training. And then they go teach the dog how to bite, but they, but they can't teach the dog how to turn it off. So that's, that's the difference, is like, if, you know, that dog is a liability, because somebody comes in, the dog will go bite, and then you say off, and the dog's like, no, I, you know what I mean? Because they're biting out of fear. So when you're, teaching, uh, when you're teaching those kinds of things, you want to first work on the fear, like get all of this stuff out the way. The dog should be able to, be neutral in any environment. And then you teach them how to, you know, bite and stuff. Biting is easy, it's just tugging. It's the same as biting on a toy. But yeah, I don't personally do that. Like, 
in general, I just work on like, you know, behavioral modifications with like day-to-day -day household type dogs. Um, but yeah, just as a personal with her, because I know that that's what her breed needs, you know, so I try to just do it with her with the sleeve and, and we just do it basically the same as playing tug. And she doesn't have any, she's dispassionate about it. She'll bite, 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 bite. I say, uh, uh, a German commands release and she releases and I say bite again, she bites, you know what I mean? But in general with obedience, I find that a lot of the problem is the duration of the behavior. So any dog will sit, but as soon as you walk away, the dog will stand up and walk with you. The understanding has to be that whether I have a treat or not, sit means sit. That's why you see me with your dog reinforcing that down. It's like I only want to have to say it once and have the dog do it, which is why you know, I tested it until we got to the point where I said down and then he went to a down. You can't get to that without reinforcing the command. When I deal with puppies or just people who've started the training process, I'm like, just keep a leash on your dog because if you say something and you can't reinforce it, the dog will learn that if it fights hard enough, it's going to, it's going to win. In a, in a situation like this, he can tell you, uh, when I tried to do the down with the leash yesterday, um, I think it took almost 17 minutes <laughs> just to get that first down with the leash pressure. But as soon as we got the down, every other time after that, he went into a down as soon as the pressure was there. So a lot of people and the, the other house we went to afterwards, the guy was like, oh yeah, this is taking too long. I'll, I'll try it another time. So he wasn't really willing to like sit through that beginning process. And so I was like, well, you know, the dog might never get there because to me, he seems like, you know, he's not going to be willing to wait past that because the beginning is tough. Like he, he could have told you in public, the dog is fighting, the dog is crying, barking, whatever the case is. They're trying to kind of bite your hands a bit. So a lot of people will not commit to it because they don't want, it looks bad in public. But if you, you have to go to, out into the public space because that's where the behavior, the obedience makes a difference. You know, you could do behaviors in the house, no problem, but if you go outside and you say sit, your dog's not sitting, he sees another dog and then decides to break the position without any consequence and the dog learns that it can do that and get away with it, then you don't have a, a well-behaved dog. Like people are so impressed with Capri and all I do is just take her to places and put her in down and let people walk past her. People, oh my God, that dog is, wow, can't believe that dog can lay down, you know, in this, in, in this environment. And I'm like, it's just a basic down that you do at home. <laughs> it's, just, it's just that I've come outside and done the same thing and reinforced it. So she understands that whether we're in the house or we're outside, down means down. So those are really the general concepts that I like to apply to, to training. I feel like my training style is very simple. It's just, if I say a command, you have to do it or else this is gonna happen. But then if the dog likes something and wants something, whatever it is they want, I can give it to them as a reward. So if the dog decides, because leash reactivity, when the dog looks like it it's wants to go attack the other dog, most of the time it just wants to go play and say hello. It's just that the dog doesn't understand how to do so calmly. And so when it comes then to corrections, a lot of people are against like popping the leash and correcting the dog. But in a situation where there's a lot going on, the dog has to be able to be in a mental state where they come down, you know, the, the, the excitement level or the fear level or the whatever it is is too high. In that state of mind, because of the way that the central nervous systems operate, the dog cannot make sense of anything. That's where people fail with reactive dogs. <laughs> what is happening? Do it again. Come into it. So you're going up and down. That's, that doesn't do anything. It's okay. got to be this way. Yeah, yeah, but that's not it though. Oh, that's not. No, no, no. All right, let me do. Let me. Let's switch. All right. Don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. So. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's literally the explanation I give to people. All right, let's try again. People don't like to correct small. With a small dog, you don't have to do that much. It's just a little tiny version of it. All right. You do it for real. Yeah, try to like get my, there you go. So there has to be first slack. Cause in a situation where the dog has pressure on the leash already, all you're doing is just tugging against the pressure, which is gonna make them wanna go the opposite way. Cause they have what's, what's called opposition reflex. So anytime you pull on pressure, the dog will pull away from the pressure. <laughs> no, in and out, commit to it.
So start, you're starting off with pressure already. Release, pop, and release. Fast. There you go. Perfect. All right, do it again. There you go. All right. So it's, it's simple, but a lot of people do it wrong all the time. So, all right, give it a shot. You're almost there, though. I just want you to get it. There you go. That was good. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Cool. <laughs> it's practice. Yeah. There you go. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, but more. There it is. That's good. Uh, I'll try one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out more. There you go. Yeah. The, mo the more uh, slack you kind of give it, the, the more effective it is altogether. Yeah, yeah. There's just no, it shouldn't be a pull at all. That's where, that's the thing that will, because in that moment, as soon as you turn it on, it, might, it will actually, if the dog is already reactive and they're kind of on the fence, it will push them into reactivity. That's why corrections are tricky. You know, a lot of people don't like correcting dogs, but it's not, it's just that they don't know the timing of when to do it. No, you gotta oh, <laughs> pop and turn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There you go. That's it. Okay. So just turn right into him like that. Keep, keep turning into him and then move. And then randomly again into him like that and let him learn to flip around that way. When you're releasing him, don't add the pop. Just release and start moving. If he doesn't move, then the pop happens. Because you're trying to get him to start doing things on just the command alone. So yeah, yeah. So when you so stop and say sit right now. Just leash up. And then relax. Okay. So when you're when you're saying okay, just okay and start moving. There you go. Because if you build a habit of, okay, pop, and start moving, he'll start anticipating that release as like a thing to fear. There you go. And he'll just try to avoid it, which is, which is what's going to make him start looking at me. Yeah. There you go. See? Perfect. <laughs> 